Hey, what's going on guys? Mr. Chuckles here, and today, well first of all, let me apologize. I haven't had a video up like the last three or four days. I've been having some problems with my computer, but hopefully everything is now fixed. I really hope it is. I want to be able to get some videos up for you guys every single day. But today's actually not going to be covering, covering Crucible content. I do apologize for that. So what I'm going to be doing first is talking about how do you get light level. I have been asked a good 18, let's just say about three dozen times actually. That's probably accurate how to get light and how to level up quickly now some of you are maybe are already at the 290s like I am awesome you got it down for the rest of you though I just want to talk about it really quick there's two really effective ways to get light the first being the court of oryx going there in a fire team of two or three is uh, really helpful go through and you guys can go through and get your runes I don't know if I have any left right here are the reciprocal runes go through and run the level one we went there in a fire team of three and then a bunch of other people ended up joining as we did it off and on. They would just run into the area. And I think we ended up doing it for about two solid hours. Or maybe it was something like that. Well, we had did well over 40 Court of Oryxes, Tier 1 and Tier 2. And I got mad engrams. Like, all of my engram inventory slots, like, this thing was completely full. And my Postmaster had quite a few in, too. So, you definitely want to check that out. That's really good. It also is great for getting your artifact up. There's a lot of artifacts that will drop from the Court Oryx. The second thing is actually going to be in the Strike playlist. So, Strikes are huge, and I would recommend Strikes for anybody who wants to get a higher light level. This would be the re recommendation, I would say, the level 36 Strikes. They have a great chance of dropping your loot. The thing about Engrams now, are that when you decode an Engram, the Engram is now going to be based off of your current light level. So, the Engram will be somewhere around where you're at. As long as you're constantly leveling up, you're constantly going to be getting better gear. Now, once you hit around 255 or 260, I started the weekly heroics at about 247, but I was with a friend. If I was in randoms, I wouldn't want them to have to carry me through that. But I definitely recommend doing the weekly heroics. They do take a little bit longer than the level 36 strikes. However, they have awesome loot. The thing about strikes is you're always guaranteed loot. So the weekly heroics, for example, even if you've already done it and you've already got your legendary engram from it and all of the mar 10 marks from it, Every time you kill the boss, the boss will guarantee drop two engrams. I did about nine of these last night with my friend Phil and Mr. Raul. And when I went back to the tower, I had 43 engrams from nine of them. And I also had two strike-specific engrams. If you wonder what those strike-specific engrams are, one of them happens to be this scout rifle. It's called the Treads Upon Stars. This scout rifle is cabal-specific. So you can get it from a couple different missions. My friend Phil got it from the Shield Brother strike. And two strikes later, I got it from the Valis strike on Mars. Now you probably see, well, what is that big-ass ugly helmet in the back? That is another strike-specific item. This one's an armor piece. This one is specific to Darkblade. As of right now, I know there is well over 20 different armor and weapon pieces that are strike-specific. Specifically to a certain type of enemy or a specific strike in general. And yes, there are weapons and there are armor. Also, these are not set perks. My friend, Phil, got the Treads Upon Stars with two entirely different perks. Even though it's from a different strike, I have a very good feeling that it's literally every time you get the weapon, you can get certain perks. Uh, yeah, I know last night I bought five engrams, and all five engrams were new engrams, Matt. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish up this video. So after you go through and you get your light, you can go through and do the weekly heroic, and then you can go through and do the nightfall. And as for the nightfall, this week I ended up getting the insurmountable skull fort, which is really good for the titan, actually. They changed it, you now get an additional melee, so that really helps out. Go through and also, people keep saying constantly buy stuff with your legendary marks. You don't want to be constantly buying your legendaries or infusing. If you find a blue that's better than your legendary, if it's like 5 or 10 over, get rid of your legendary. Equip your blue and toss your legendary piece of armor. That'll really help you out. Trust me. As you can see, I still have a blue armor piece that's 295. When you infuse something, you only get 80% of something. So say you have a... Legendary that's at 100 and you have a blue that's at 200 if you infuse that blue into that legendary Your legendary will then only be 180 so even though your legendary went up You're actually losing light the only thing you're gaining is that legendary pieces perks for example I did want to infuse my sunbreakers mark so I had to find another blue that was 295 and I had to infuse it actually three times to get it to this light level So do be careful when you're infusing it also costs three legendary marks per infuse All right, so now that we covered that I actually want to talk about a quest really quickly I want to talk about two quests. One is the chaperone quest when you get. The first thing you have to do when you get this quest, it is random, but it's from Amanda Holiday. Maybe there's a set way to do it, but I haven't been told what that is yet or know specifically what it is. Once you get this, though, it says get p kills in PvP with the last word. 
and it wasn't easy at first because obviously the last word is not nearly as good as it used to be but there's a few things that you can do to help yourself do that when you go through and get your last word you probably have your aggressive ballistic set that's the one that you used to have because it gave you the most amount of impact and you could two shot people change that over to soft ballistics you'll actually be getting more range out of it at the small cost of impact it's not actually a huge deal it will benefit you trust me and then once you do that, you're going to want to go through and I'm going to tell you guys to do something that I've told you not to do, and camp. You want to camp specific choke points. I would highly recommend doing clash, that way you don't have to worry about doing any sort of objective like rift or control. I did do some games in rift with the last word, trying to get it, and it was just a pain in the ass. You get 1% for getting a kill, 2% for getting a headshot kill, which isn't nearly as easy as it used to be. And then everything after that, like if you get like a 5 kill spree, you'll also go through and you will get, I believe it's 5% and after that it's 1 more percent for every kill. Now if you die, here's the problem, you lose 1 to 2%. Also, it says specifically you have to have the last word equipped. I have tried special and heavy weapons do not count. People keep saying they do. I have tried with multiple different specials, snipers, shotguns, etc. And I have just used specifically the sniper or just the shotgun for a few kills in a row and got on a couple kill sprees, like 3 or 4, and I didn't gain any progress towards my bounty. So, whatever they say, those don't work. The last word worked, and my abilities worked. And I was using my Sunbreaker, so definitely use those. I got a Slayer Metal at one point, and I got a huge chunk of experience for that. So I'd highly recommend just camping on that part. And then, once you get to the next step in this quest, you're going to go through and run around. Here, break it down for you guys. Talk to Amanda. Go through and pay 15,000 Glimmer to the Cryptarch. I know he, Raul's try, always try and do a rip us off little bastard. And then talk to Amanda. Now this one's a buckshot bruiser. This one's actually pretty easy. You have to use a shotgun to defeat guardians of the crucible and the high level minions of the darkness. Now, if you go into the darkness and kill high level majors, it doesn't have to be high, specifically high levels, but just yellow enemies, every three majors is 1% towards this. And you have to get 100%. And trust me, it takes a very long time. Now if you go to the crucible, Every one guardian is 3%. I managed to knock this bounty out in three games in the Crucible. It's a lot quicker doing the Crucible version. Even if you're just an average player, this is the Crucible is the way to go on this one just because you don't actually lose progress on deaths for this one. If you get to get a kill, you just get 3%, and that's the end of the story. Piece of cake. Visit Amanda, and now two for the row, this last part of this right here. Use a shotgun to defeat the Shield Brothers on the Dreadnought. You guys remember the Thorn Bounty? Well, this is the same idea. It's a light level 290 Shield Brothers Strike, and it's uh, it's actually not terrible. The worst part is there's Epic, and there's a crap ton of Void Shields, and I really none of us had any Void Primaries, so that really sucked. But we got through it. We had somebody use Radiance, my buddy used the Bow, and I used my Sunbreaker. Now, the catch to this is, when you get to the very end of the bosses, you have to be the one to deal the last blow to the boss, and you have to use a shotgun. So the shotgun I ended up using was no problem. But what I had them do basically was a coordinated. I had them, right before his health was really low, I had my buddy cast the bow. So I'd do extra precision damage. And then I walked up and just put all five shots into my shotgun in them. And once I killed the first boss, I then went through and I'd do that with the second boss. So it was pretty easy. Just make sure you're coordinating the kills so that way you get them. Because if you don't actually get the last hit, you will not be getting the points towards that. Alright, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the Crucible Bounties, or the Crucible Storyline. This thing is freaking long, and I hate it. This is just the faction part. I'm not going to cover every single step. There's actually a video that Miss Watts did on it that's really specific. I will leave that link in the description below. But I would highly recommend going through and doing this if you really want to get the weekly rewards from the Crucible, the weekly bounties, or the Nightfall tier rewards. It's not easy. It's a lot of patience and a lot of grinding. I would highly recommend doing it with a team. I usually play solo, but some of these things it's a lot easier with the team. There's like four different quest lines that you have to do to, com to complete to finally unlock those weekly bounties. It took me a while to figure out how, you to, how to unlock those. I'm actually still not finished, so go through and start working on that if you are interested in those bounties. And then the next thing I wanted to talk about is the sword. So if you go through and you do the missions and you go through and find the flakes, I will also leave a description or a link in the description below for a guide to go farm the flakes to get your sword if that's something you're interested in. But this is the exotic quest line for the sword. What you're going to want to do is your sword will start at 220 once you pick your element. You then have to get it up to light level 280 plus. Once you do, this last node right here will actually unlock. Fill that node in and then go back to the tower. 
Once you do that, Shax will then have another quest line for you. And that quest right there, it will be called um, a sword reforged right here. And I'm actually only on step three, but I know for sure that that is an exotic quest. And you have a bunch of stuff that you have to go do. You have to get a bunch of crucible kills, and you also have to kill 50 plus majors. I would just kill the majors when I was out doing patrols or when I was doing other quest lines. That way, it was something I could just do on my way. Now, the last thing that I want to actually talk about is the... Let me see if I can find it. I mean, obviously, I'm preparing for the raid, so you can see that I've leveled up my Suros. And I'm getting all these guns. So, the last thing I want to talk about is the gunsmith. So, this shotgun right here, as you can tell, is specific to the defender. Kills inside Word of Dawn with Armor of Light do not expend ammo. Every class has this. How you get these weapons is your gunsmith. If you level up your gunsmith to rank 2 you'll be getting a weapon. The Titan will receive this shotgun every time. The Hunter will receive a sniper that's basically like Black Hammer combined with Patience of Time. When you're zoomed in, your radar is more enhanced, and when you land all precision shots within the magazine, you will refill your magazine. The Warlock will then receive a Fusion Rifle, and the Fusion Rifle will basically change elements. So whatever subclass you are, say you're a Storm Caller, you then use an element with your Fusion Rifle equipped, it will change to Arc. Now if you're a Sun Stinger and use a ability, you will then change to Solar. So that's pretty cool, but that's not the end of the gunsmith storyline. You can actually find something, it'll appear right here as a little quest. It looks like a legendary pocket infinity. It'll come up in your chat in the bottom left as a legendary engram and a bunch of random numbers. Or excuse me, it'll drop and look like a legendary engram, but it'll come up in the bottom left of your chat like right where the set destination is. There's a bunch of random numbers. Now what that thing does is you turn it into the gunsmith for 200 reputation. Those are really helpful because once you hit level 3, level 3 also guarantees you an exotic. Every class has an exotic specific to them. The Titan receives a auto rifle, the Warlock I believe receives a hand cannon, and lastly the Hunter receives a scout rifle. I believe it's a scout rifle. So this is a couple great ways to go through and get exotics and to level up your light and also to just farm the strike playlist.